In this video, I'm going to be talking about the maximum vertical distance a person reaches hang time. The first thing we're going to solve for is the uh, maximum vertical distance a person jumps. And if the person is leaving the ground at three meters per second, we have an initial velocity of three meters per second. And as soon as their feet leave the ground and they're only under the influence of gravity and we're neglecting air resistance, we always have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, and that goes for anything that's in free fall motion. And then the third variable is when something reaches its maximum height, it always reaches a final instantaneous velocity of zero meters per second at the very, very top. So if something is rising and the earth is pulling it downwards, it's gonna slow down and eventually reach a final velocity of zero meters per second. Now we're looking for the maximum height, which I'll call delta y, the change in the y position, or the displacement in the y direction, which is basically the same thing as the delta x. The delta x is just in the horizontal direction. So if I take a look at my formulas, uh, I'm going to use this third formula over here because this is the only one that has a displacement in it with all of the three variables that I currently have. So let me go ahead and plug into that third formula and see what I get for the delta y three variables that I currently have. So let me go ahead and plug into that third formula and see what I get for the delta y. All right, so I plugged in everything into my third formula. We have zero squared equals three squared plus two times negative 9.8 times the delta y. Uh, zero squared becomes zero, three squared becomes nine, and then the two times negative 9.8 gives the delta y a coefficient of negative 19.6. So I subtracted the nine from both sides, which sent the negative nine to the other side of the equation. Then finished off by dividing both sides by negative 19.6 to get a final answer of 0 0.46 meters as my delta y. Now for my hang time, I have two different choices of how I can solve for it. I can still use the original numbers that I have here. Um, I could also use the delta y too, but it's not really necessary. But if I use these three formulas here and I want to solve for a time, I can use this first formula over here. So if I do that, I get acceleration of negative 9.8 equals the VF of zero minus VI over T. And then if we solve for t, we can go ahead and cross multiply these two, which is basically the same thing as multiplying both sides by t and then dividing both sides by negative 9.8. Either way, these two are going to switch spots and then the t is going to end up being 0 0.31 seconds. Okay, now if I do that, that isn't the total hang time. That's the amount of time it took to get to zero, which is the very peak of their jump. So which is only half of the time because there's um, a certain amount of time to rise and a certain amount of time to fall, which is equivalent to one another. So if I take that time to rise and multiply it by two, then my total hang time comes out to 0 0.62 seconds. Now, the other method to solving for our total hang time is we could one, find the amount of time it takes to reach the top and then double that time. The second way would be to change the VF to negative three. So if something reaches its peak at zero, but if something goes all the way up and then back down to the same exact position, you can assume that the final velocity is the same as the initial velocity, but with a different sign. So if I plugged in VI of three, VF of negative three, along with my acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, 
I can plug it into the same formula that I did over here. So then if I did that and I used all of those same values, but change that VF, Then I get a final time of 0.61 seconds, which is slightly different than my 0.62. The reason why there's a slight difference is because I rounded off this 0.31. So after I multiply it by two, it became out slightly higher. Um, so either of those two methods work, either finding the time that it rises and then doubling it at the end, or finding a VF that is at the very end of the motion, which is negative three. So remember the VI is the same as the VF, but the VF is gonna be negative because it's going downwards. If we plug in that negative three as the VF, it's basically negative six divided by negative 9.8, which would give us the total hang time. In this case, it's 0.61. As I said before, it's slightly different because of the rounding that we did earlier, um, but still it gave us our total hang time. So I hope that was helpful in helping you find the maximum vertical height of an object jumping along with the hang time. Thank you for watching and listening.